my lovely, lovely, lovely imps, we have been gifted a very strange but very wonderful treat. And that treat is a debate between Prager of Prager U, the Dennis Prager, and some guy named Sam Cedar, who apparently comes from sh some show called The Majority Report, which I don't know, <laughs> I don't know sounds like a, a movie title with Tom Cruise in it. But no, of course I jest. Tom, uh, uh, <laughs> I almost said Tom Cruise. <laughs> this is not good. I'm not off to a good start. But um, no, uh, tonight, of course, <laughs> um, we are going to enjoy Sam Cedar, who is, if, you, if you've never seen a debate done by Sam Cedar, Sam Cedar is one of the most talented debaters that I've ever seen. Like, he is right up there with the greatest of the greats, okay? Sam Cedar's debate skills are incredible. He's funny, he's quick, he's well-informed on the topics that he chooses to debate on, and tonight, we get to see him go up against Dennis Prager. If you don't know who Dennis Prager is, Dennis Prager is a uh, arch-conservative propagandist. Dennis Prager uh, runs Prager University, a uh, which is not a university. That is just it's just called a university. It is a propaganda firm. It's a a conservative funding uh, uh, filter. They they make media that propagandizes and promotes conservative figures, and they direct money towards up 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 and coming conservative uh, video makers. So they basically do all this. And now, of course, they're breaking into the business of indoctrinating children. It's ironic, right? That these guys are uh, constantly screaming about uh, save the children and don't indoctrinate children. And yet their literal first method is to make a bunch of children's shows that uh, basically say that kids should be in love with uh, Christopher Columbus or else they're bad. Uh, and um, and uh, books to be used in schools that teach children to... Uh, hate anyone who is different than them. Incredible, right? Anyway, that's what we're about to see. So without any further ado, let's together sit down and watch Sam Cedar versus Dennis Prager. And they are going to be debating on Israel. Would you say that Sam is a master debater? Oh, he's, oh, there's nothing better than to see Sam Cedar master debating, okay? Listen, a lot of us out there have remarked on many occasions that Sam Cedar is a uh, a fairly attractive fellow. And what can I say? He looks great master debating. Okay? All right, let's do it. What? We're going to be on conference call with maybe uh, Prager. Oh, is that, the, is that copyrighted music? I hope not. That's not copyrighted music, is it? Somebody said copyrighted music. Okay, let's go. How much time do we got? All right, I'll talk over it. I'll talk over it. I'll talk over it. Damn it. God damn it. They play Misty Mountains? 15 minutes. This is a great birthday gift. Thank yeah, you, Greg. Want me to just go right into it? I told him that my son is in college and he's attended college. Oh, oh, oh. Damn, this is some deep fried ass shit. They got a radio piping. They got like a they got like a little fucking tiny kids radio with a mic next to it for this. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, oh man, look, okay, we're going to get into it. I don't want to spoil anything. Listen, I actually have not seen this debate, but I've seen a screenshot from this debate, which made me laugh so hard that I knew I had to cover it. Let's continue. Okay. Yeah. Let's do it this way. Dennis Prager I'm Show gonna mute my on microphone. the Salem Radio Network returns from break in 45 seconds. Happy birthday, you big idiot. Oh, thank you. It's a good birthday present. What has happened to the Democrats? And that philosophy is being planted to the earth. 
Has anyone brought up Kissinger dying yet? Oh, 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 Voxel. Oh, Voxel. You just missed it. You'll have to pop back. We just did a big segment on it. The Dennis Prager Show on the Salem Radio Network. Return some break. 1 8 Prager 776 877 243 Albany. Oh, he's. Oh, man. Let's Oregon. Go. Ron, hello. Uh, hi, uh, Dennis. Uh, thanks so much for taking my call. Um, I, I think I told your, your screener that uh, my, my kid is in college and. Oh, I should explain some context. I am a regular viewer of the majority report. Although I don't watch as much as I used to. I used to listen to the majority report very regularly. I don't listen as much as I used to, admittedly. But for those who aren't in the know, um, when he refers to, when they said that his name was Ron, um, the way that he got onto the show was by having a, a friend of the show whose name is Ronald Reagan. Um, uh, Ron, Ronald Reagan is a, like a, like multi times per week caller to the majority report. He's a he, he's basically a, a guy who calls in and talks about interesting subjects with the majority report all the time. He's been he's been a part like a he's been like a regular character on the show for a long time. So Ronald Reagan offered to help Sam get into a conversation with Dennis Prager. And the reason for this is because Dennis Prager has been avoiding a debate with Sam Cedar. Now you might recall that Dennis Prager constantly goes on his platform and talks about, well, the left doesn't like to debate. And he does that type of shit. He likes to say all the time, the left won't debate anybody, but he's been actively dodging Sam Cedar's debate. So thanks to Ronald Reagan for making this possible. Now you know the lore. There are protests going on there and needless to say, Thanksgiving was a little bit rough. Go on. Well, um, <laughs> go on. Oh man. Okay. Uh, I don't want to, uh, let's go. Let's go. My, uh, my child, I don't want to say the, the, the college that they go to because I, I, you know, I, I don't want them, uh, to be chased down or anything. But, uh, my concern is that my son uh, doesn't appreciate what's going on in Israel at all. And uh, doesn't understand what the dynamics are there, and it is uh, increasingly a problem. Is what's going on, on these campuses? That's right. Um, Anti-Semitism is a problem uh, in this country. It is rising. I'm not sure if I subscribe totally to the idea that it's a function of secularism, because you know, obviously, the Spanish Inquisition. We had a lot of anti-Semitism that existed before any type of uh, secular movement. In... in the United States it is. I make it clear in the column. You're right. American Christianity was totally different from European Christianity. But I mean... This it... was a Judeo-Christianity. It was pro-Jewish. That's why I read to you John Adams, who was a committed Christian. Well, that's true. That Jefferson but, I mean... and, and Jefferson... Go on. Well, I can tell you that, I mean, just, you know, I mean, uh, when my my uh, my my parents and my grandparents came over uh, in the 1800s, uh, they had to change their name. They couldn't get insurance. This was not a function that they were very uh, they were very pious. Oh, I mean, so you're so you're Jewish. OK, that's interesting. So the fact is, however, that compared to, you're right, compared to a truly perfect society, it was a failure compared to every other society. Why did they flee their society and come to America? If you would have asked your grandparents, are you happy you came to America, even though it was harder to get insurance? They probably would have laughed at you. Oh, well, no, of course. They, they left because of programs, but they weren't secular in, in Russia at that time or Lithuania. No, or you're Vilnius right. Or... I, I said I've said all of my life to American Jews, my fellow Jews. Okay. This is one of those things that we keep seeing over and over again with right-wing talking heads that talk mad game on YouTube. And then when they get into a live format, it's like a giant embarrassment. Uh, happens to Matt Walsh, happens to Candace Owens, happens to, uh, uh, what's his fucking name? That guy, um, Michael Knowles, 
and now we see it with Dennis Prager, where when they're in a live setting, they have just no charisma. And they also start to get really nervous and stumble over themselves all the time. This is just like, my God. Like the 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 it's it's like it's like sucking the charisma out of the room. And like Sam is like just asking questions, and this guy sounds like he's gonna fall asleep. He sounds like he's falling asleep. He's like I already told you when I read a column. Like, it's like, well, maybe this caller, like, even if this wasn't Sam, oh, it's it's right out there. Um, even if this wasn't Sam Cedar, like, what if the other, what if the caller hadn't heard the column or read the column? Like, what the fuck? Let's go. That the European Christianity was not the same as American Christianity. This, these are the Christians that put Torah, uh, Torah script on, on the Liberty Bell. Right. That may, had you study Hebrew, that, that said the greatest contributions were made by Jews, like I read to you from John Adams. This was a different country. This was a different form of Christianity. Well, I agree. I mean, I agree. I mean, I, you know, you have someone like John Hagee speaking at the, um, the rally uh, for Israel, I think, was frankly an abomination. I mean, I wasn't for, uh, for uh, John Hagee speaking there. He has a record. I was. I was. Well, I even John McCain. Me. I thought it was a great choice. I know him very well. Back in a moment. Okay. <laughs> Back in a moment. What a terrible... By the way, also, another thing that is, becomes immediately apparent is how much... Can you guys... Wait, real quick. How long was I reading that article and how exactly how many ad reads did I do to you all? I did what? In the entire reading of that article, I asked for subscriptions quickly two times. No fucking ads, none of that shit. Crazy. Right-wingers, every 30 seconds, they got to interrupt you. They, they spout their practice lines, they hit you with an ad. They spout a practice NPC line, hit you with an ad. Hit you with an ad, hit you with an ad, hit you with an ad. Ad, ad, ad. Never get any depth. Always just practiced NPC lines. And every show that they do is like this. All these conservative shows are like this. It's so fucking annoying. The Dennis Prager Show returns in five seconds. Oh my god, it is! It's Misty Mountains! Why are they playing Misty Mountains? <laughs> Chariot says the music should be the Oblivion soundtrack, but they almost did it! They did, they basically did by playing the Hobbit music! Dwarves, and we want some gold from the dragon whose name is Smaug. We are a wizard and some hobbits and some dwarves, and we're gonna get the Ark and Stone. Wait, isn't that like a, isn't that like a, uh, 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 isn't, isn't that a, a, like a urinary product relief? Isn't that? <laughs> no! Oh, it's joint pain! Relief factor is a joint pain ointment! <laughs> Called sleep. And guess what it does? I'll give you a moment here to think about it. Sean is baffled. It's fascinating. Sean, I don't understand. It's sleep. Sleep. Hello, sleep. What is this ad read? The, the, he, he's phoning it in. Oh my God. His advertisers must hate him. Folks, a lot of you have problems falling asleep or staying asleep. My heart goes out to you. It's not a problem I've ever had. I'm very lucky and I know it. But if you need to, this is a great product. On occasion that I have taken it, like, for example, when I went to London and I wanted to sleep. By the way, if you've been enjoying this incredibly funny debate review, make sure that you subscribe to Demon Mama so you can hear the signal! Sleep on the plane. This thing is fantastic. Anything Relief Factor does, I'm a big fan of. So <laughs> 
yeah, this medication's great. Whatever it does, I like it. It's great. It's good. Whatever it does is good. I don't know what it does, but it does good stuff. So, if you uh, need to sleep or stay asleep, try it. Go to relieffactor.com and order sleep for restorative, regenerative Bizadu says this live stream is supported by viewers like you, Chatterinos. Our community spaces are more human, unlike right wing ghouls whose pure existence is all capitalized. True! Absolutely true, and thank you for supporting the show. Deeply appreciate it. This is a viewer supported show. Thank you. And also, we just witnessed Sam uh, unaliving himself with scissors. Leap. Relieffactor.com. So, my column this week is essentially that when America was more Christian, Jews were more secure. So there are two issues with my call. This is a really important call. I'm f you called because I, I have a lot of thoughts on what you're saying. So this is uh, Ron in Oregon. And there are two issues. One is that his son... He uh, is a Jewish family, and his son has been participating in anti-Israel protests at his college. And the other is that he doesn't fully agree with me, because look, after all, look at all the anti-Semitism in, in Europe, which was done by Christians. And he's absolutely right. But as I've said all of my life, American Christianity was not European Christianity, and Jews the best place Jews have ever lived outside of their own land has been the United States of America. So do you see how do you see how he took all of the airtime to read off a bunch of literally just assertive propaganda statements? That is that is like the heart and soul of prop of, of, of radio propaganda. Now he has no charisma while doing it, but it doesn't really matter. He's preaching to a choir. He's repeating this propaganda to reassure people in their beliefs. No real depth to it. America is the best place for Jews ever uh, besides Israel. Israel is slightly better, but not that much. And just and, and Israel, the state of Israel, is the only safe home for the Jews. Your last comment was that you were distressed that at the rally in Washington for Israel, they had Pastor Hagee speak, correct? Yes, that's right. I mean, I was never, and the, I never totally agreed with John McCain about all things, but when he um, distanced himself in 2008 from uh, Hagee, I thought that was the right thing to do. And the reason? Well, I don't think the idea that, and this is what Hagee believes, obviously not what I believe, or I would imagine not what you believe, is that um, Hitler was sent by God to push Jews to Israel. And I mean, I understand the Christian prophecy that uh, we as Jews are a part of that, but not necessarily in the best way. But um, I guess my biggest concern is um, we just had the, uh, the, the greatest attack on Jews since the Holocaust take place. And I look at Israel as a place that was um, founded at least in part to protect Jews. And I think that after 75 years, what we're looking at is a situation where that project has failed. And I think in part it's failed because of the way that um, Israel has gone about it. Okay, so we you know, now entered a third uh, third arena. They're all related. Exactly. Let me just say this about John Hagee. John, first of all, I never, ever judge people on the basis of their beliefs. I'm sure you're annoyed. Wait, 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 what? <laughs> That's incredible. <laughs> Did he mean like religious beliefs? Like I don't know, man. I feel like you're. I feel like that's the one thing you're supposed to judge people for. Like I believe. Like you. No, you can't judge the Nazis because that was their beliefs. Like what? Void <laughs> when Christians think you're going to hell because you don't believe in Christ. So why are you annoyed with John Hagee for his religious beliefs? 
If well, indeed that's what he said. I have reviewed it. It's not fully clear to me. But let's say he said that. God sent Hitler. My father, who was an Orthodox Jew and fought, uh, fought Hitler in, in the U.S. Navy for three years, believed that God sent Hitler because he couldn't believe that the Holocaust just happened and God watched it. There, there, there are well, a lot. Um. Oh man. Oh man. This is such. This is like the. Oh man. We we need it. That's a, yes, uh, but that is a that is okay. A, so I am Adolf Hitler. So so far. I feel like we're gonna need that button a lot. I feel like we're gonna need both of those buttons a lot. So so what exactly? How? How remarkably different was my father's view? I don't agree with my father, but it doesn't matter. It, it is, it, it, I, as I said, I don't, I judge beliefs, but I don't judge people by their beliefs. So, John Hay. What? What do you mean? What do you it's mean? Not- he has been one of the most pro-Jewish, pro-Israel figures in American, in American life. He has founded the largest organization of Christians. It is the Kufi Christians well, United yes, for no, Israel. Well, yes, no, I know I that. But Dennis, okay. that's, that so actually relates to my other good? point. Because, well, because, no, because it, I do think it, it, that yeah. intent, I do think intent is important here so it is true that we we uh, you know that israel has a lot of support from uh kufi and other uh christian zionists but they want the jews there so that they go through hellfire and i also know that you know the netanyahu That's not true. the netanyahu that true. the net, no, I, I know well, that. That. oh he's gonna say this isn't true but let me tell you i can tell you firsthand yes it is absolutely true this is actually absolutely uh it's absolutely true that christians do uh believe that uh that uh israel is necessary as a part of uh end times prophecy that was repeated constantly in the church that i grew up in and even just um like two or three weeks ago doe and i were watching random sermons from uh pa- pa- pastors who are partnered with tpusa um, a lot of whom put their sermons online and we were just checking them. We were just watching them out of curiosity and they had a sermon on Israel, Palestine, and they explicitly said that. And this is a TPUSA partnered pastor who was saying this. It's a commonplace belief. It's an open belief among Christians. When conservatives are confronted on it in, um, in public, they pretend that it doesn't happen, but in every church in America, uh, every c- conservative church in America, they say this all the time. It's so fucking common. Revan777 says, my dad is a Calvary Chapel pastor, and he says that often. Yes, it's incredibly common view. It's mad. It's just, they're just lying to you when people pretend that it doesn't happen. And they're usually doing it to try and, uh, to try and make themselves seem more reasonable, which is ridiculous. It, it, they're just cowardly about their beliefs. That is exactly the prophecy that Hagee is talking about. And, no, no, no. And okay. I will also that was say one this line in with one Netanyahu. Talk. Okay. With Netanyahu. Okay. Also making common cause with um with yes, because he's right making wing. common cause because the greatest support in America for his country is coming from Christian Zionists. Well, but I think that's problematic Why he make in the end. Cause with them? Well, I'm I'm trying I'm to explain. Sorry? I'm trying to explain because I think what it breeds is a type of of uh, singular nationalism in Israel, which has left Jews unsafe. The the road so, that could have so been taken believe, with Zionists. Okay. So you we know that there was that a strand Israel of Zionist thought. Okay, we, we, so no, no, understand. not Israel. I'm saying certain elements within Israel, because we know there was Zionist thought, starting in the late 1800s into the early 1900s, where the idea of a uh, a multi-ethnic, multi-religious democracy could have taken hold. Folks like Boober yeah, okay. and Hannah Arendt uh, spouses. Well, Instead, just, we have a fascist... Don't uh, be shocked. Another ad read. It's been like four minutes. Another ad read. Somniostatic says he has to know it, Sam. No, never assume that. He doesn't. He definitely doesn't. Um, that said, from what I understand, um, Dennis Prager is like personally 
very invested in this type of conversation. So I think that Sam is kind of the perfect person to go up against him on this and also the perfect bait in that um, Sam it knows knows enough about a topic that Dennis Prager is very invested in personally that Dennis Prager won't simply hang up the phone on him. That your child has taken your oh. ideas to their conclusion. Oh, Dennis. It's weird that you had to cut me off. I don't was Einstein a Zionist? I don't think he was. I think he I think he critiqued Zionism. I don't think he was strictly a Zionist. Um oh god, I can't remember. I was just reading something about this too, but I can't recall it. Anyway, let's continue. <laughs> In two minutes and 45 seconds. Oh. I don't know. I think he might be. I think he might be done with it. Yeah. I get the sense he was. He definitely cut me off. Should we hang on the line to see if he comes back to you? I don't know. That's up to you. I'm just working. Because you're not having real conversations. <laughs> The Dennis Prager Show on the Salem Radio wow. Network returns from break in two minutes and 15 seconds. Uh, well, you got more runway than you thought you might. I right? definitely yeah, yeah. did. Yeah, I, I really greased that runway, though, didn't I? Uh, uh, you did such a good job with, like, Ronald Reagan, I really appreciate yeah, uh, the birthday gift. Being obtuse about the uh, what your song is. Oh, we're going to stay in show you guys to get some whole music like this. <laughs> what the fuck is this? This this is like another this is like a Hobbit feast song. Another fucking Lord of the Rings ass tune. Is it bagpipes? That's what it means to be a mighty man. Well. 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 On the Salem Radio Network. Return to a break in one minute and forty five seconds. Alright, we're gonna hang on for a minute and forty five second break? It was four minutes since the last... Oh, my God. One minute, 45 seconds. Um, okay. I know I know that it's because most of the people who listen to this don't even know that they're listening to the Prager show. They just have the radio on in their nursing home. But, like, I don't. how do they not lose all their listeners when they bombard you with boring ads and terrible one minute, one and a half minute, two, two, even three minute breaks every four minutes of content. How would that not, oh my God, it feels like it would drive you crazy. I can't even get up to go to the bathroom for one minute without people tuning out and wanting to go find something more interesting. And 15 seconds. Well, this guy's ripping the. By the way, if you're. Hold on, I need the fiddle music. By the way, if you're enjoying this, make sure that. Oh, they're talking now, too. But make sure that you are like a good hobbit subscribing to my show. Make sure that you press like down below. Make sure that you throw a few tips to me, because I'm keeping you entertained. <laughs> This is like electro, this is like, this is like electro, electro, uh, river music, river dance music. Uh, the Dennis Prager uh, you know, show try to encourage on the Salem people Radio to post Network. and try to... good hold music no it's cr it's fried deep fried to hell what has happened to the democrats the dennis prager show on the salem radio network returns from break in 15 seconds oh my god
the Dennis. Pre this is the th this is the tunes you tune this this is the tunes you turn on when you when you're about to bag a uh, a proudfoot babe in your in your uh, in your hobbit hole in Hobbiton. Rager show returns. In you're like ooh hoo baby, it's time. Five seconds. I feel it in the home from I cry when a human about Go to relieffactor.com read what people have Make sure you we make sure you put the ointment on your joints Make sure you put it everywhere you ache You don't want to get bruised and if you do you want to feel great about this product which relieves pain in muscles and joints I know it I endorse it I use it the living martyr uses it my wife uses it in fact my wife used it before I ever heard of it that's why I actually agreed to even promote it years ago because she told me oh it's fantastic for her knee pain it's so good she sometimes forgets to take it and then she doesn't take it and the knee pain comes back Try for three weeks. Doesn't work in three weeks. The bankers say you should cancel your order because it probably won't work for you if it doesn't work in three weeks. Go to relieffactor.com, 1995 for three weeks. That's it. The, literally the most passionless ad reads. But I guess that's what happens, right? That's what happens when your life is like a, an oiled machine of coughing out boring propaganda. You know, there's a real possibility that this is the first actual intellectual stimulation that Prager has felt in a long time. Like, that he's finally having someone to talk about something, and he's he, he knows that his agenda would tell him, oh no, I should, I, should, I should not have this conversation, but he's desperate for that stimulation. You should definitely try it. ReliefFactor.com, 800 500 you should definitely try it. You should definitely try my knees. My my soul is hurting right now, and and uh, relief action action relief. What was what's the product called? It can't soothe the pain of a soul, but it might soothe your bunion. Okay, so uh, just a final word here. I rarely keep somebody on so long, but I thought that this is valuable. So I just want to say, and this is. God knows I, I, I thank you for your call and your openness. Thank you. But with your views with regard to Israel, it, it, it's not shocking that your son would have participated in anti-Israel demonstrations at college. Well, I, I know you wouldn't, and I fully appreciate that, but he, he didn't come from a home that made, made peace with with Israel as a national Jewish Oh, he's armchair psychologizing. Ooh, bad move, man. Bad move, especially because this is a fictional character. Oh, man. <laughs> yeah. Freud you now. Project. Well, I think that's not I don't think that's true actually. I mean, my my uh, certainly my much of my Hebrew school, uh, you know, and I at that point was more uh, conservative than than Orthodox. Uh, but much of my Hebrew uh, schooling was was oriented towards I Israel. Many of my uh, teachers were um, yeah, but were that's former irrelevant. It's, it's your views. Well, look, you said. But the all I'm saying is, I'm looking at this as a practical flawed. matter, though, uh, Dennis, because as a practical matter. If the part of the Zionist project was to provide a safe home for Jews, I, uh, I, I mean, and surely you know this as well, um, we have Israelis now who are in bomb shelters four times a day. And that, it has not worked. The peace and security for Jews as a, as a single ethno-national state has not worked. So, On that, so therefore, you believe Jews would be more secure 
if there weren't a Jewish state and it was just a Jewish and Muslim state. And, and Christian. I mean, I think the, you know, and the. Uh, yeah, and, well, there are so few and, Christians there. Okay, well, yes, yeah, uh, yes, of course, it's so academic. You, you believe Jews would be more secure with majority Arab rule? I, I, I think absolutely a multi ethnic uh, uh, society right. could be set up. I mean, listen, this is the same thing okay. that people said All about right. South right. Africa. Look, i got to leave you that because we've talked well, so long. Okay. Well, uh, Dennis, I really appreciate you having this conversation let, uh, let with me. The uh, listener decide. Thank you. But I, I think it. You need to be honest with yourself. Oh, if you believe that- I am being honest with my. Oh, dude. Oh, that is so. Oh, he got overwhelmed. He realized he was he was out of his comfort zone, and he had to run. He's like, oh, oh no. This might be effective counter to my propaganda. I better turn it off now. He might have a producer going, hey, 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 hey. This is gonna wake up some of the people in the nursing homes. They're they're getting stimulated. You need to turn it off quick. The project Dennis. is a failure. It, it, it is not that surprising that your son would have demonstrated against Israel on his campus. Well, I mean, I wouldn't characterize the demonstration uh, St. Petersburg, me. Florida. Corey, oh. hello. Ah. All right. Yes, hello, Dennis. Um, since October 7th, I've been to four or five Catholic churches for Sunday Mass. All right, hold on. Wow. That was... That was a... That was a... That was a fucking bad showing by Prager. Chariot says, Dennis realized he couldn't counter Sam's point without condemning the idea of a multiracial society, at which point he's endorsing, endorsing ethno-nationalism. Yeah, that was a really good move. And also, Sam, and I want you guys to pay attention what Sam did. Sam set up the fact, uh, he, he it, early on, he got Prager to say, yeah, America's like the safest place for Jewish people. And what it, America is a, pr according to Br Dennis Prager, America is a multi ethnic, multi racial, multi religious democracy. And, but, but then all of a sudden he changes his tune when it comes to Israel. So Sam Cedar set him up, uh, and B Prager basically realized, oh shit. I'm in trouble because I just spent the first half of this conversation explicitly because Sam pretended uh, like early on, he got him to expound um, by talking about um, the secularism subject. He got Dennis Prager to expound about how good America is. America being multi-ethnic, multi-racial, multi-religious. And then that set him up for the later question. What I, that's, that is the type of shit I'm talking about when I say that Sam is an excellent debater. And Prager knew he was caught, and that's why he had to leave. And the thing is, of course, most of his viewers don't care. Most of his viewers are not even thinking about it. They're listening for all of the activation words that he read leading up to that, and that's all that really matters to them. But what this does do is this shows people who are questioning um, just how incapable of grappling with actual questions and actual challenges uh, conservative talking heads are. And not just, one time has the priest mentioned in his home. Uh, I guess uh, oh, he, he left. All right. Reagan hung up. We got yep. the uh, held over two commercial breaks. I mean, I thought he was taking commercials. I, I got news for you, folks. Yeah. You got to really know. Like, yeah, I did too. <laughs> I can't believe you got on that long. And he he's you've spoken to him before, right? Like, he supposedly knows your voice. Well, I, I mean, I don't You got on for like a second at one time, and he... Uh, he I hung up immediately. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty um, amazing. I mean, it was nice to be able to reach his audience. And, uh, yeah. you know, I don't think I... I went super hard no. but to, to have that long of a time. Yeah, exactly. That's isn't that kind of telling, right? Uh, Sam wasn't being super belligerent. Sam wasn't even being super argumentative. He just brought up points that are inconvenient for Prager uh, and also reveal flaws in Prager's worldview. And that's just not they just can't deal with that. They have to shut it down. I'm uh, <laughs> I feel bad now because my son's not in college. Yeah. He's in elementary school. And your name Striped Kidder says, "Why does the right always paint the left paint left-leaning people as inflexible and unwilling to engage? How do they not acknowledge this as blatant protection because they don't care?" It is literally conservatives, okay? Right-wingers believe in an us versus them world. Rules do not apply to them and they do apply to other people. So they engage so what they engage in is a very 
a Machiavellian approach to their language. They don't actually care that they're hypocrites. They don't actually care any of that. What they care about is winning. What they care about is projecting strength. It's the same reason that there's a bunch of fucking conservatives who um, will call everybody else a pedophile all the time and then double down, bending over backwards to defend um, institutions like um, like the Boy Scouts of America or uh, the Catholic Church or uh, the Jehovah's Witnesses or, uh, I don't know, the Southern Baptist Church, organizations which have had explicit massive mountains of evidence showing the widespread and systemic embedded in those agencies child abuse because they don't care they care about raw power that's what they care about in in the conservative worldview and i know this because this is the environment i grew up in this was what i was taught and told in the conservative worldview, what matters is winning. You say whatever you need to to win. It does not matter. You are blessed by God. You are sent with a mission from God to make the world a good place. And the secular right-wingers, of which there are less, but there are still some, they, they, they don't necessarily always bake God into it, although they usually do at least a little bit. Their view is you're saving the West from degeneracy, but it's the exact same structure. You must save the West, which means whatever tactic you you absor you need to use in order to win, you do it. Even if it's hypocritical, even if it's a lie, it doesn't matter because you are fighting for a greater good. You're saving the West from degeneracy. You're saving the heathen from sin. You're saving the lost world from falling into the grip of Satan. I'm serious. That's how it all boils down. That is the core of their belief system. And it's why they act like this. And I'm not saying there aren't leftists who act like this too. There are Machiavellian leftists, but it's not core to most leftist viewpoints to behave like this. And part of the reason why uh, you you see that leftists um, don't have the same level of, of, uh, of um, just impunity with regard to their tactics um, is, is, is because they feel bad. They have an emotional... Uh, and moral center that makes them go, I don't want to engage like this. It's the same reason why lefties don't love to fucking riddle their show with ads to the degree that they just lie about 120 different products that come in, that come, that, you know, that are, that are giving them money to say whatever. It's the same shit. Yes, Bizadu brings up the, the Satra quote, and yes, that's an absolutely good, uh, good, good quote for this. Yes is but, not ron and my name is not ron and no wonder so but ron is no one of my wonder. nicknames but you know if dennis wants to avoid this kind of deception he can just come on the majority report and debate sam long form without yeah. those kinds of obstacles wow i'll tell you something there was uh Brutus Magnuson with the $10 says, Ayan Hersey Ali saying we need to embrace uh, Christian nationalism, even if Christianity isn't true, is uh, is just giving the game away that power and dominance is all that matters. Yeah, you ever wonder you ever you ever wonder why all of those um all of those atheist right wingers all of a sudden are constantly peddling to Christians now? Y y like, for example, a great example of that is Dave Rubin, Mr. Intellectual Dark Web Facts Over Feelings, and he suddenly had a Christian moment, and now he's a Christian all of a sudden? It's because they don't care. They they will shift their views like a fucking chameleon to whatever is necessary to uh, take part in an agenda that gets them power. Whatever they think is convenient, they will say. It's that simple. It's that simple. 12 minutes of, or nine minutes, or 10 minutes of ads in what was yeah literally like 30 seconds. I thought he did it to avoid and end the conversation, but no. he was actually just taking scheduled ads. Yes. Yeah, that is amazing. <laughs> um, Keep getting them checks, Dennis. All right. Uh, let's read a couple IMs and get out of here. People complain about our ads. Also, yeah. it's really funny too. If you another thing, um, by the way, uh, massive shout out to Sam Cedar. That was an excellent play, and he, uh, uh, even though none of Dennis Prager's listeners care about the truth, uh, it's definitely awesome to put uh, to, to to put Dennis Prager in an uncomfortable position. So shout out to Sam Cedar for that. I wanted to point out something that Dennis Prager did—a debate tactic. Um, that Dennis Prager did that's effective with his type of audience. You notice how at the end for the entire last bit, 
what he did was he basically said, you don't, you don't actually have a strong enough commitment to your belief. And that's why your son is an, is anti-Israel. It's because you raised him in a household um, where, uh, uh, where he wasn't taught what was right. And therefore now he's like a liberal. That is literally, it is a, that is such a practiced line. It is it, it, the audience that he pre preaches to is uh, primed to be afraid of their kid going to college and becoming gay, trans, liberal, a hippie, whatever. They, that's like a fear, an anxiety. And he goes and he he wi he he wins for his side of the debate by basically spinning it into that by saying it's a thought terminating cliche ultimately but um it's a little bit more of a complicated thought terminating cliche in this case it says oh well you have the, you're questioning israel which means look at what you've done no wonder your child became a uh uh, uh became a a, a a a heathen no wonder your your child wandered off the path because you didn't build the foundation for him, and now look, he became a liberal. It's literally like like laser targeting the anxiety of the boomers that listen to his show, which, by the way, they reinforce constantly. So, of course, this is a created anxiety. Um, for some people, it's a real fear. Like, a lot of people fear that, like, their kid will leave home and, and not love like not love them anymore or not care about them anymore. That's like a, a, a basic fear that some people have. But in conservative spaces, it is perpetually reinforced over and over and over again, day after day after day until it literally becomes almost pathological. And there he was, brings it right up to make sure that people don't actually engage. Instead, they go, oh, thank God that's not me. I'm bringing my kids up on the right path. I'm bringing them up on Prager University kids. Thank goodness I won't have to worry about my kids falling off and becoming critical of Israel like this stooge. It's so wild. Oh my god, it's it's actually wild how that rhetoric works and and how you can learn to see it. If you go and watch Tucker Carlson, you'll see him do the same thing too. He'll he'll constantly reinforce that same idea. Uh, a lot of conservative media is just a long string of like well-polished fear-causing pearls. Um and they just string them along on a string and they deliver it with with ad breaks in between to make sure that the sponsors are getting money to make sure that everybody's well-oiled. Um, yeah, it's, it's really, it's really, uh, stunning. It's, it's stunning how simple it is and how much it's just built off of thought terminating cliches that are meant to short circuit your ability to actually reason and instead immediately plug you back into whatever fear they're trying to peddle. Anyway, I don't think I have much else to say about that debate. It was certainly fascinating. I think Sam did a really good job and proved his rhetorical finesse and also his strategic finesse. But um, I think it's educational for us to review debates like this because you can see just how deeply and 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 calculatedly manipulative um, things like PragerU and his radio shows and Daily Wire and all these things are constructed. The way that they use very, very specific pre-packaged manipulative uh, 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 thought terminating cliches and uh, and repeated memes and reinforcing uh, ar uh, arguments that don't really have any substance. They're just, I shouldn't say arguments, I should say assertions. They, they repeat these assertions until it eventually builds a, a shell around the mind of their viewers, which a lot of their viewers are already seeking. They're already looking to have their shell reinforced. They want to be safe and comfortable in the worldview that they already live in. One that repeatedly tells them that they're doing things right. That they're, there's nothing wrong with them. You don't need to think anything wrong. Just buy the Pain Relief Plus. Just join the Mug Club. Just tie to your local church and everything will be fine because you're doing God's will. Anyway, thanks for listening to me uh, uh, rant about this and, uh, and discuss the, the way this type of rhetoric works. Pay attention to it, and the more of us that get aware of it, the more we'll be able to teach other people, and the more resilience they'll be against this type of stuff. Um, my goodness. Chariot says, is this a cooking mama stream? Because you just cooked. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you enjoyed this segment, please make sure that you're subscribed to Demon Mama down below so that you can hear the signal. And of course... If you disagree with anything that I've said, or if you agree and want to let me know, 
put it in the comments. I love to hear from my fans. My fans can tell you I'm really good about responding to comments. I spend quite a decent amount of time actually responding to my comments, unlike a lot of other creators. So consider it. Anyway, thanks for listening.